Today we got how India is trapping China with its military strategy. This seems like a really interesting video, so yeah, I'm looking forward to jumping straight into this one, man. Troubles began as early as 2013 when China expanded its Belt and Road Initiative. Massive construction projects in Pakistan, Sri Lanka, Bangladesh, and the Maldives caused unease in Delhi. If you ask me, uh, is, is our relationship normal today? My answer to you is no, it is not. I never China knew that China and India had such like a problem. A much stronger military power. India has also stepped up its participation in the Quad, which is a group of four countries, including the US, Australia, and Japan. Hi everybody, in the past three episodes of the geopolitical series, we saw how China started with something called the Belt and Road Initiative to conquer the world trade. Right. Now just to give you a quick recap, firstly, China strategically used Djibouti, Sri Lanka, Myanmar and Pakistan's weak economic situation to surround India. Secondly, China spent billions of dollars into building oil refineries, high-speed cables, railway lines and even gas pipelines to build an alternate trade route around India. And lastly, China is building an extremely strategic railway line from London to China oh, and another shit. railway line from China to Iran, passing through Kyrgyzstan, Uzbekistan, Turkmenistan, finally ending at Tehran in Iran. This is how China is literally building its own trade route to become an economic superpower. And in this process, China intends to surround its rivals like India and eventually gain military and economic advantage over the United States. This is what we have covered until now. Now, when China is doing so many things, India is obviously not a saint to keep quiet and let China become stronger, right? Right. So the question over here is, what exactly is India doing to tackle the security implications of the Belt and Road Initiative? What is India's strategy to face China in case of a military conflict? And lastly, what are the study materials to help you understand India's geopolitical moves better? This video is brought to you by Windwealth, but more on Touching this at the mark, end of the video. I, I the answer no to this lies this was in a very important quote by a historian named Alfred Thayer. In his theory of sea dominance, Alfred Thayer said that whoever conquers the Indian Ocean will dominate the whole of Asia. So let's try to understand right. why is the Indian Ocean so so important in geopolitics. Well, if you look at the world map, you will see that the Indian Ocean region consists of 28 countries spanning across three continents and covers 17.5% of the global land area. These countries it's include a big ocean. 21 members of an association called the Indian Ocean Rim Association. This includes major nations like Australia, Bangladesh, India, Indonesia, Iran, Kenya, Malaysia, Oman, Singapore, South Africa, Sri Lanka, Thailand, UAE and Yemen. Then there are seven others who are not a part of this association which includes Brunei, Cambodia, Maldives, Myanmar, Pakistan, Timor-Leste and Vietnam. And this region is home to over 35% of the world's population Holy which is around 2.6 billion people. Now if you notice something very peculiar about all these nations that I stated, you will realize that the Indian Ocean region is home to some of the fastest growing countries in the world. Secondly, it is one of the most strategic regions in the world which falls at the crossroads of the global trade itself. The Indian Ocean connects the international economies in the North Atlantic to the Asia Pacific region. And secondly, the major sea routes that connect the Middle East, Africa and East Asia with both Europe and America also lie in the Indian Ocean itself. And what is absolutely mind-boggling about the Indian Ocean is that 80% of the entire world's maritime oil trade flows through just three narrow passages of the Indian Ocean. These passages are at the Strait of Hormuz, Strait of Malacca and the Strait of Babel Mandeb. These points are what we call as choke points. As in, if you choke these points, the major part of the world trade itself will come to a standstill. Yeah. If this is very very clear to you, let's understand these choke points better. The Strait of Hormuz is a strait between the Persian Gulf and the Gulf of Oman. The Strait of Malacca, as you know, is this place between the Malay Peninsula and the Indian Ocean island of Sumatra. The Babel Mandeb is a strait between Yemen on the Arabian Peninsula, Djibouti and Eritrea in the Horn of Africa. I'm pretty sure I've watched a video in the past where there was a, a country at war and they literally choke point this this hold here. And um yeah, they took control of most things because obviously they got they got hold of this area and they couldn't trade or anything. This trade connects the Red Sea to the Gulf of Eden. And apart from these three choke points, we have four more, which are the Mozambique Channel, the Suez Canal, the Sunda Strait, and the Lombok Strait. 
Now, if you remember from our previous episode, China has very clearly entered very close to all these choke points. To establish dominance over the Strait of Hormuz, China has the Gwadar port in Pakistan on a 40-year lease. and it also has its infrastructure and railway lines to Iran to establish dominance over the strait of Bab el Mandeb and the Suez Canal China has debt trapped Djibouti to build its naval base and then to capitalize on the strait of Malacca Sunda strait and the Lombok strait China has made strategic alliance with Indonesia to build its infrastructure projects wow. and if you go through the details of the Chinese relations very very closely you will see that China has already established very close relations with the Mozambique government and has established control over a port called the Dar es Salaam port in Tanzania So in short the world trade can be stopped within a jiffy if you have control over these choke points in the Indian Ocean and at the same time if you do not have control over these points your enemy can block your trade in no time and quite evidently China has slowly extended its dominance wow. over all these choke points this is the reason why the Indian Ocean is an extremely crucial region with respect to maritime trade and more importantly for India because of China but the story does not end here Apart from maritime trade routes, the Indian Ocean contains some of the most precious resources in the world. In fact, a large portion of the resources of the Indian Ocean is yet to be explored. And it is said that 16.8% of the entire world's reserves and 27.9% of natural gas reserves are in the Indian Ocean itself. And this is where the Indo-China conflict comes in. The string of pearls theory very simply is that China is trying to encircle India um, with a number of naval bases in surrounding countries. in such a way that it's like a, a, a string of pearls around your neck the chinese can then tighten to choke you in choke your neck there is a cold war that is created between india and china the string of pearls theory has been discussed for more than a decade and the ukraine crisis ma this has been going on for like some time as well bro i had no clue this is so fucking interesting has renewed interest in the subject My answer to that has always been even if they're trying to do it with this debate more I would say that India has a fairly robust neck and that is not so easily strangled China has very strategically emerged as one of the most important trading partners of the Indian Ocean region and it accounts for 16.1% of its total goods trade as of 2017 and like we saw in the Belt and Road video in the past two decades China has been building infrastructure projects in Sri Lanka, Myanmar, Pakistan and Djibouti. Why? Because all of these regions fall in the trade route of China's oil imports and their exports to Africa, Middle East and Europe. So we have the Gwadar port in Pakistan, Hambantota Tonda port in Sri Lanka, Djibouti's naval base and even Myanmar's Koek Phu port. This is what is being called as the strings of pearls theory. Now the burning question over here is what exactly is India doing to tackle it? Well, instead of openly and boldly announcing its strategy like China, India has been slowly and steadily operating in a stealth mode with something called the necklace of diamonds strategy. Okay. To understand this, let's take a look at the list of strategic bases India has set up with partner countries as well as the various trade agreements that India has signed. And by the way, you must have seen a lot of people who often criticize the prime minister saying that he is wasting India's money by taking a world tour. Well, for those of you, here's why the Prime Minister of India spends countless hours in traveling all around the world. हम अपने देश की अखंडता और संप्रभुता के साथ समझौता नहीं करते हैं। जब भी समय आया है, हमने देश की अखंडता और संप्रभुता की रक्षा करने में अपनी शक्ति का प्रदर्शन किया, अपनी क्षमताओं को साबित किया। चाहे स्थिति कुछ भी हो This guy is busy. This guy is busy. Daily building connection. That's why he's there. Jamin ki, desh ke swabiman ki. Bro, is there so? Is there anyone he hasn't visited? हमारे लिए भारत की अखंडता और संप्रभुता सर्वोच्च है और इसकी रक्षा करने से हमें कोई Nah, there's no one he hasn't visited, bro. There's no one. First, let's start from the counter for China's strategic placement at Gwadar and Djibouti. For this, India has very cleverly placed its base over here in Oman, and here's where we have the Dakum port. The Dakum port is where India's important crude imports flow from the Persian Gulf. This place is strategically located on the southeastern seaboard of Oman and is overlooking both the Arabian Sea and the Indian Ocean. On top of that, it is also straddled along the critical sea lanes in the Arabian Sea and the Gulf of Aden. And all thanks to India's relation with Oman, we have military access to this port, which makes it a great defense point. 
Then we come to this region that is close to the second choke point which is the Mozambique Channel. In 2015, Modi ji signed an agreement with the Seychelles president to develop a place called the Assumption Island for military use. But unfortunately, after this deal was done, there were a lot of protests, there was a change in government because of which this diamond as of now is in a shaky situation. Then we come to perhaps the most important choke point of all which is the Strait of Malacca and the other two choke points right beside it. Here's where we have the Changi Naval Base wherein in 2018 Modi ji signed an agreement with the government of Singapore. This basically the China has a point on every choke point and so does India. They're basically just you know this agreement has like provided right direct there. access to the Indian <clears throat> Navy itself. So while sailing through the South China Sea, the Indian Navy can refuel and rearm its ship through this base. This is followed by the Sabahang port in Indonesia. And again, in 2018, India got military access to Sabang port which is located right at the entrance of the Malacca Strait. So theoretically, we have a firm grip over the Strait of Malacca. And if you remember from our China's BRA video, 70% of China's oil supply and 60% of their trade passes through the Strait of Malacca. So choking this point is like choking the Chinese economy yeah. itself. After that, we have the Indo-Vietnam Diamond. And long story short, we have historically had a great relationship with Vietnam. We supply some of the most important defense equipment to Vietnam. And we have signed a comprehensive strategic partnership with Vietnam in 2016 itself. Then we have our important diamond in Japan. On 9th of September 2020, India and Japan signed something called the Acquisition and Cross Servicing Agreement that would allow militaries of both these countries to exchange supplies and services on a reciprocal basis. So again, Japan and India can use each other's port as per their strategic requirements. And the best part about this point is that if you look at the map, you will see that it gives us a very very close placement to the mainland of China itself. And then we Close have pretty much on top of it. Modi ji became the first Indian Prime Minister to visit and more importantly, India has established a very strong relation with Mongolia by giving out a $1 billion credit to develop an air corridor for Mongolia. And lastly, we have the Chabahar what port the in fuck? Iran. And if you remember from our China video, again, Iran is also a part of the Chinese BRI initiative. Then again, in the terms of like consciousness of $1 billion, was, yeah. Then they have a railway line from China to Iran passing through Kyrgyzstan, Uzbekistan, Turkmenistan to finally ending at Tehran in Iran. So here's where India very cleverly understood the importance of Iran. So in 2015 itself, when Iran was facing crippling economic sanctions and diplomatic isolation, India agreed to develop a deep water port in Chabar on the Gulf of Oman. And as a part of this deal, Modi ji visited Iran and signed the agreement worth $500 million to develop this port and related infrastructure. And if you see, it's not just strategic with respect to China's infra in Iran, but also very very close to the Gwadar port in Pakistan. Now if you connect all these points together on the world map, you will see that it's literally a necklace around China and more importantly, they are strategically located points that can be used to counter the Chinese in case of any military conflict. Now, oh, although shit. the relations with all these countries is not as ideal as we would like, it is a very very significant step to make sure that the dragon is not left completely loose. Yeah. This is what India is doing to make sure that we are protected from the notorious Chinese moves. And this brings me to the most important part of the episode and that are the study materials to help you understand India's geopolitical relations and strategy better. Moving on, the first document I am attaching comes from the International Relations and Strategic Studies Institute. This document explains the importance of the Indian Ocean and this document will give you a very very clear understanding as to why is Indian Ocean so important for the global economy. Secondly, I am attaching a document on the Belt and Road Initiative of China which will give you a deeper understanding of what exactly is China trying to do. And for this, you can even check out our previous video. And lastly, I am attaching this super important Quad Summit fact sheet, which will teach you- Yeah, you know what? I actually want to learn more about the Quad. If, if any of you guys watching this video has a, uh, a good video on the Quad, link it down below, because I definitely want to check it out. About the important relationship that we are forming with the US, Australia, and Japan. Read through this document very, very carefully because it will give you a very deep understanding about how India and other nations actually collaborate together to actually tackle their common threats and to capitalize on their opportunity. So as citizens of India, using these documents, you will very easily be able to understand the international relations strategy of India to counter- See, I'm just like, man, I need a video. I need a video. China and other threats. That's all from my side of today, guys. If you learned something valuable, that was actually a really interesting video. If you guys got any videos on the line of this that you want me to react to, let them down in the comment section below. Hope that you guys did enjoy. Make sure you guys leave a thumbs up, subscribe, and I'll see you all in the next video.